How you doing, KT? How you doing? I'm pretty good. Good. We'll get stuff? ready with some questions for you here. We're going to start with uh, James Crippia from the Oregonian. Hey, KT. Uh, during the summer, man, it looked like you weren't slowing down at all. When you went home in L.A., you were working pretty much anywhere. Uh, where, where all were you? Uh, whether it was uh, looked like between schools, parks, and pretty much anywhere else you could be. Uh, and just what went into every, every day, what was kind of your routine? Um, so in the off season, um, I was back home with my family. So I was really doing home workouts. I mean, push ups. Um, we didn't even really have weights like that. So we were just doing deck of cards. I mean, anything, honestly, like you say. Um, I was at uh, Dorsey High School. I did a couple uh, workouts there at the park. Um, yeah, honestly, it's just been all park. Kind of uh, Rancho Park in LA is kind of like the one I went to the most. But yeah, I was just out there, me and my, one of my high school coaches. And, you know, we were just grinding every day. Next question comes from AJ Jacobson from Rivals. Hey, KT, I, you know, thinking back to your performance last season, it just seemed to me like you just came on stronger and stronger and stronger as the season progressed. And at the end of the year, you're just doing a fantastic job for the Ducks. What do you think was the basis of the improvement you made uh, during the season last year? And then how do you think you've been improved between then and now? Uh, for me, it's been getting bigger physically. Uh, I've kind of toned my body. I'm in the 250, 255 range right now. Um, so getting bigger has been like one of those big things for me. Um, also playing smarter, you know, actually reading between the lines and, and learning the, the coverages and a lot of things I didn't know, you know, coming out of high school. So I was just able to get a lot smarter, you know, coming from now to then. Next question's from uh, Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Kayvon, it turns out you only got to spend one year um, on the same team as Panay Sewell, but how much did competing against him help you accelerate your development? And just based on these early practices, who are some of the guys you think might be able to try to fill those shoes? Um, honestly, what I, could, what I could say about Panay, he gave me that confidence. And every day I knew I had to go against, you know, he's the best guy in the country. So it was like, once I did that every day, I could go against anybody, you know? So now coming into this year, I have, all confidence going in on every play. Um, filling in his spot, you got uh, Sala. Um, his last name is pretty hard. But, yeah, Sala. You got George Moore. And you got uh, Big Steve. Oh, Big Steve, he's going to be ready. And uh, he's – he's. I see him, him, Sala, and George being the, um, the next guys at the tackle spots. Next question is uh, from Julian Minenson from uh, KZI. Hey, Kayvon, um, just wanted to say, uh, you know, year one to year two fall camp, just kind of what's the, what's the difference? Is the mindset different? Um, you know, knowing what you know now going into this fall camp, you know, how do you attack it? Is it different than last year as a freshman? Um, kind of take me through that. Well, for me, the mindset is almost completely different. Um, when I first came in, I was kind of an understudy. I was learning. I was growing, you know, coming to this year with all that's been going on. I've had to kind of step and embellish this uh, leader position on the team. So that's kind of what has, has been my mindset and just being a leader. And now, you know, I'm not the youngest guy in the room anymore. I'm, you know, closer to the oldest. So I got to really be the exemplar for, you know, everybody under me and everybody that's looking to see, you know, what to do. And honestly, it's about being perfect at this point. You know, it's no more just the best I can. You know, it's, it's about really being perfect and being consistent. Next question comes from Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Hey, Kayvon. You kind of mentioned you're one of the veteran guys now. Um, a ton of freshmen on the defensive line, I think especially at the spot you're working at. Kind of what have you seen from those guys? And, and I guess how have you, and I guess, built to work, I guess, as a leader, and just as a sophomore now? Well, I mean, we have a lot, a lot of freshmen, and they've been doing a lot of good things. Um, we have a, lot, a long way to go, a lot to learn still. Um, I think there are going to be some guys that step up. I don't want to name any names yet, you know, and jump the gun. But the, the the freshmen coming in are making a big role. And then they're soaking it up. You know, there's no there's no pushback. They're kind of seeing, you know, the leadership. You know, new leaders are um, taking place and, and everybody else is following. So I feel like we got a good mixture of young guys and, and uh, intermediate guys that have been able to, you know, step into the role. And it's, it's working together. It's like it's, it's molding to a big family. Next question comes from Tyson Alger of The Athletic. Hey, Kayvon, when, when you were doing those summer workouts, how did you kind of go about like just planning like 
you know, here's what I want to do and here's my goals. And then you said you were working out with a coach. Like I imagine a player of your caliber, there's probably a billion coaches that would want to work out with you during the summer. Like how do you kind of like, who, who did you work out with? And like, how did you kind of develop that trust to, to get you in, in a coach to get you ready for what you needed to do this year? Um, well, for me growing up, I kind of learned, I say coming out of high school, I, I honestly figured out what perfect looked like. And I was able to really meet the coaches in college and then knowing my coaches from back home going through high school, you can kind of tell a good coach from a bad coach, you know? And with that being said, um, the coach I, I coach with, um, he, he was my D-line coach in high school. So we've never kind of lost a relationship. He's always been there looking out for me and just, you know, always kept me, keeps me on my game. He sends me different pass rush clips every week of the NFL players. And for me, it's not even really big names, you know, because just like, colleges every you know coach has the same technique they have the same facilities have the same stuff but it's kind of like the emphasis you know who really cares and who who's going to take the time to to see what you need to get better on and um that's kind of what I found I like to be with people who's brutally honest with me and uh he's been that his name is coach Kai uh shout out to him but uh yeah he's been brutally honest him and coach Moore have been brutally honest and um it's, it's honestly developed my game they never let me take a day off they don't you know they they've showed me that the the yellow brick road is there if I follow it, you know, but it's about the process. You can't just have a destination in mind without putting in the work. Next question goes to Matt Preem from 247 Sports. Yeah, KT, Nick Pickett yesterday said something that I thought was pretty interesting, how he found some positives in the process of COVID-19. He said he's getting to the facility earlier, more time for rehab, more time to watch film. Has there been anything that you've found that, you know, you, to make a positive out of this kind of situation that we're in right now? Honestly, the rehab. Um, the schedule we have now has given us more time um, to really take care of our bodies and really be ready. You know, um, our sports science has really made a great plan for us in development and being ready to go and being healthy. So you, you see a lot of guys taking advantage, um, a lot of younger guys taking advantage early. You know, it doesn't – they you usually see it in the back end. You know, when people are seniors, they start to take care of their body, they start to realize. But, you know, with, with what's going on, people are really, you know, taking heed to it. And, you know, it's, it's working out for the best for us. Next question from Max Torres from Scoop Duck. Hey, Kayvon, great to meet you, man. Um, I know, you know, with your play style, you know, with your athleticism, you get asked to do kind of a lot of different things with this uh, Oregon defense, rush the passer, come off special teams. How do you feel this Oregon defense really plays to your skill set as a player? I feel like for a player to call himself skilled, he has to be able to fit in any scheme. That kind of is what makes a player valuable, you know, being able to do multiple things. So for me, um, when I first came in, it was like pass, rush, pass, rush, pass, rush, sack, sack, sacks. You know, like I had this one thing in mind. But then when, when you really realize it, you got to be a four down player. You got to be able to, you know, be there all the time. So it's like, for me, you know, learning coverage, being uh, uh, just as good as uh, in rundowns as I am in pass downs, you know, it, it, it honestly, it's the whole nine. You got to be have the whole package if you want to be a great player. So, you know, once that was, once I realized that, that's kind of been my, my mantra, just, you know, doing, doing everything and the little things. Next question's from James Krapia of the Oregonian. Kind of a natural follow-up with that, KT. Last uh, preseason, you know, you weren't shy. You said you wanted 10 sacks in the season. The most games that you could play this year is nine. So do you have a sack goal? But on top of that, do you have another goal in the sense of if you talk about being an every down player, do you want TFLs that have nothing to do with sacks? Do you want to bring down running backs? Do you have something else in mind that shows that you're an every down player? Now, I, I always look at that, that how I said, you know, in the beginning, I wanted 10 sacks a season. And I realized how immature that was, you know, and how like, 10 sacks, that's, that's cute. But for me now, it's like I want to be 100% on my grades, 100% on my alignment, assignment, and technique. And doing and every down I'm in, my mental is ready. I'm mentally prepared. I'm physically prepared. I'm not tired. Last year, I could have been better, in, better prepared for, you know, the, the long drives, the long stretches. So working on my being in shape. Um, yeah, but honestly, my, my biggest goal is getting as close to 100% in my grade per game on assignment alignment and technique. Last question for KT is going to come from uh, Tyson Alger of The Athletic. 
sorry, sorry to keep pounding on the summer workouts, but you said they were, you, you had people that were brutally honest with you in their assessments. What's, what's the most brutally honest thing you heard from a coach this summer? Oh, that I'm little, I'm skinny playing the four eye. I don't know if everybody know what a four eye out there, but you can't play a four eye under 250, you know? And like I was saying, if you want to be a four down player, you got to be able to take on two blockers at once. You got to be able to shed, you got to be able to stay in the fit, you know? So them telling me that and them, you know, driving that in my head, like, now it's like, now I take that as offense. Like calling me skinny is like a terrorist threat. You know, I, I, I pride myself in, in being as big as I could be. Thank you, KT. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Have a good Appreciate day. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one.